talk about, which is related to uh, chemo induced, which we used to call as chemo induced cardiomyopathy. Now uh, the terminology has changed into uh, chemo uh, therapy related cardiovascular toxicity, just to be more inclusive. Um, uh, these are my disclosures. Uh, in Kuwait, we started an initiative between cardiologist and oncologist to um, uh, present the concept of uh, cardio-oncology. Uh, we had a great meeting among colleagues uh, discussing uh, establishing this new, it is a new uh, emerging uh, speciality in cardiology to deal with those uh, patients. And in the 2022 European guideline, they had an excellent uh, review and uh, guideline on how to start and manage uh, those patients in different aspects. Uh, new nomenclatures has been um, uh, presented that doctors should be aware of and change their terminology. So there is what is called CTRCVT, cancer-related uh, th therapy-related cardiovascular uh, toxicity. There is when we say CVD, of course, it's known as cardiovascular disease, uh, because I'm going to keep saying that. Uh, CVRF, which is uh, cardiovascular risk factors, uh, CTRCD, which is cancer-related therapy, cardiac dysfunction. When I say NP, we mean non-theoretic peptide by NBNP or anti-proBNP, NTN, we mean troponin. These are the things I'm going to use. So as for the epidemiology, uh, anthracycline-induced cardiomyopathy include 1% of all the patients. 65% of anthracycline children are treated, uh, could, would, uh, treated for leukemia. Up to 15 years could chase them. With, uh, with developing uh, heart disease way later in their life. Uh, trus uh, trastuzumab uh, is reported to have from seven to 33, uh, and a significant portion of them have asymptom asymptomatic disease, so they really need to be screened. Uh, incidence of severe failure uh, is ranging, as you see in studies, from three to 40, so there's no real uh, consensus. And heart failure associated with, um, with other cancers with every drug it looks uh, differently now what do what do they do why does the cancer uh, therapy causes uh, heart dysfunction there are so many uh, ways through growth factor signaling to mitochondrial dysfunction contractility problem affecting the electricity of the heart uh, causing thrombosis or causing fibrosis or apoptosis different mechanism that could lead to uh, cardiac dysfunction um, the, the there are so many agents that can cause this uh, and you can see a lot of agents that are known to be uh, to be causing that and uh, uh, you know such as herceptin is very famous anthracycline is very famous so these things uh, doctors really cardiologists are not as much aware as uh, oncologists about these so creating an awareness about the different kind of drugs and knowing the history and when you say just only he took chemotherapy is not enough you really need to ask the patient what chemo they're taking because patients actually are uh, divided into three important phases and this is where the role of cardio oncology uh, go, uh, is here because it allows the patient it says as to allow the, the role is to allow patients with cancer to receive the best possible cancer treatment safely and minimize cardiac uh, complications so there are those patients who are during therapy who are before therapy we need to screen those patients and there are during getting the therapy and those who survive the therapy are all at risk and should be uh, seen in those three phases. So the role, the important task we have is identifying the at-risk group. We need to prevent those who need prevention. We need to, to do surveillance for those who need surveillance throughout their therapy. And then we early identify the appropriate management for potential cardiovascular complication. And it needs to be done into an interdisciplinary discussion with a whole group. It's not one doctor writes a note and then he sees another doctor and nobody knows. And there's this uh, discommunication. And then also those cancer survivors need management. So the way we classify them, we look at different aspects. We look at a uh, history of previous cardiovascular disease, it differs regarding their age, sex, genetics, uh, medical uh, uh, risk factors like diabetes, hypertension, sleepidemia, even those with a lot of risk factors at higher risk of developing disease. Uh, previous uh, cardiotoxic therapy, so somebody who had chemotherapy and then takes it again, they're also at risk and uh, they, because they develop it and they can develop it again. Uh, those with, with signs of heart failure based on their echo and ECG already need to be uh, seen. So what we do, we classify them, we look at the um, their history, we, we look at cancer-related history, and then we do complementary tests.
tests such as natriuretic peptide, troponin, ECG, and kidney function, liver function, lipid. This is all the routines that we really, really need to assess every patient before, especially those at high risk. And I will uh, show what we mean in a moment. Now, when we look at the baseline, we, we, we assess first, is they, are they at risk or no? So based on what we think, we do, of course, everybody deserve an ECG. That's a, that's a, that's a class one. And then we look at, uh, we check their physical and metabolic assessment. And then we do, we see, are they known to have pre-existing uh, pre, uh, cardiovascular disease or no? Those with pre-existing cardiovascular disease are divided into those with showing signs of high troponin, there is some cardiac markers or problem on your echocardiography, then you have to refer them to a cardiologist immediately because they are known. You look at those with maybe when you assess them, they are at risk. So then we need aggressive uh, improvement in their cardiovascular risks, and you might consult a cardiologist in that. Then those which would, if you do ECG and you see abnormality, which has never been reported, then those patients need to be referred. So uh, looking at risk factors is uh, the basic. And we will discuss what ICUS is. We divide them into low, moderate, or high, and very high. The low risk, uh, they don't need to see a cardiologist until a cardiac problem happens. Those with high risk should immediately go to see a cardiologist. So either no, unless something happened, a high risk should see a cardiologist. In the moderate, well, it is... It is okay to be seen by, a, by a, an oncologist where, with very vigorous uh, looking at cardiovascular, and it is may accepted to be seen. Uh, it's not a must to be seen a cardiologist immediately, but this is, a, if it is possible, they could take an opinion. But if it's a high risk, they need to see it. If it's low risk, they don't need to see it. So what do we do? Number one, just to go into the details, we need to risk stratify the patient. You see the patient, find the stratification. If you Communicate with a cardiologist if there's any problem, assess the other risk factors, proceed to treatment in low risk. Don't keep waiting on cancer therapy until the cancer gets worsened. There is a priority to treat the cancer. So if they are low risk, you treat immediately. If they are moderate risk, you might ask the opinion of a cardiologist. If it is severe, then you have to see a cardiologist. And all the risk and benefits should be discussed. I mean, if something really happened, do I really need to cut down on his chemotherapy? This should be done with the cardiologist. Maybe the cardiologist said, no, keep on the chemotherapy. We'll maximize medication. He's not at very high risk and we'll call. For... So not because he developed cardiovascular risk, we subject them to cancer risk. And then we also need to refer the pre-existing cardiovascular Vascular. So we need imaging. Imaging is very important. Now, there are a very nice recommendation you'll find in the guideline. The cardiologist should follow what to look when it comes to the left heart and the right heart, looking at transthoracic echo and cardiac MRI. There are parameters. There is a list of, there is a checklist of things that it's not only doing, unfortunately, you do an echo and say, well, EF is that, and you say, that's it. Or you say, I want to do a nuclear study, a gate pool, and get just the, the EF. EF is fine. Then the patient is fine. That is wrong. We really need to look at the, uh, the, 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 um, the in-depth echo and look at the, the parameters that we need to look. We need to study the left side, the right side, either by echo or cardiac MRI with main objective findings. Uh, and, and based on that, we will um, uh, see how we define our, are we going to treat patients, um, for instance, uh, preemptively, like uh, prophylactically and preventive medication. Some patients are at high risk. We might need to give them some ACE and beta blockers uh, as a protection, or uh, there are patients who need only uh, lifestyle modifications. Uh, patients who develop cardiac dysfunction, again, are uh, divided into, into two. Now, those with severe disease or those who develop uh, mitral disease, now, if, if they recover, so are we going to, now, if they develop disease and we treated them and they recovered from their disease, so if they are fully recovered, we might assess and look at their future. Those who recover their heart, they had a mild disease and recovered. Uh, we give them a, wh a while. We, we counsel the patient. If they are low risk, we might think of weaning heart failure therapy and look what happens. But if they are severe or they are high risk, we will continue on therapy. But those who develop come with severe dysfunction again in the future need to keep on doing therapy and education is very important. Um, 
So how we talked about risk, risk, high risk, low risk score. How do we really know which are the risks? So we divide the risk level into low, those with no risk or moderate or one risk, which we'll show on the table. Moderate, which will show on, on the table again, M1 or M2, two points, and we count. If they are more than five points, we call them high risk or uh, very high risk. Uh, so in the, the we, we, and when we mean arrhythmias, the key points, in this, in this table, we'll see the word arrhythmia. We mean AF, flutter, high troponin, uh, uh, hypertension. We mean more than 140. CKD, we mean GFR, uh, more less than uh, 60. Uh, diabetic, uh, uh, we mean uh, A1C more than 7. And uh, dyslipidemia, we mean a uh, uh, non HDL of more than uh, 8.3. Uh, so this is a table which shows the, 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 the disease. Uh, on the left side of the panel and the chemotherapy used. So you have to know exactly. So just knowing that he took chemo is not enough. You need to know what chemotherapy is on. So if somebody was on Herceptin with history of heart failure, that's a very high. Or if he's on a VEGF uh, growth factor inhibitor and he is uh, with, with, for instance, a history of cabbage, that's very high. Or So you really need to know, based on this table, it's in the guidelines, doctors should be downloading that table and following in their um, cardio-oncology meeting. So there are the, um, and I will summarize it here. So the type of cardiotoxicity, either cardiac dysfunction or myocarditis or vascular diseases or arrhythmia or hypertension. So it is not always, that's why we don't call it cardiomyopathy. It's, it's a mis, uh, misleading because they could come as hyper. So somebody who's after chemotherapy become hypertensive, don't just look at it as an isolated hypertension. This could be related to the chemo. Somebody develop atrial fibrillation or SVT or long QT. This could be to the chemo. He developed coronary artery disease or he developed myocarditis or cardiac dysfunction because we don't only concentrate on that. You have to know it's a big topic. So patient and the, uh, the oncologist should know developing cardiovascular complication during chemotherapy is something that warrants a look on a relationship. In cardiac dysfunction, as you, as I said, they are developed into symptomatic and asymptomatic. So a patient could have no symptoms. Those are the people we see on surveillance, and we divide them to severe, moderate, and mild. But there are patients who come with heart failure. Again, they are either mild, moderate, severe, or very severe. And those mild with mild symptoms, moderate with maybe OPD intensification of therapy, severe, they get hospitalized for heart failure, and very severe, those who need inotropic support and ICU admission. So they could have absolutely no symptoms and develop uh, cardiac dysfunction. Because in the heart, we divide patients into stage A, B, C, D, and heart failure. So there is a group of patients which have high risk of developing heart failure, but they still did not dysfunction. Those are the cancer patients. Stage B are those who develop cardiac dysfunction with still no symptoms available. Because you, you have to know that in the development of symptoms, the weight change and the symptoms and hospitalizations comes really, really late in the, in the uh, process of the disease. And the high filling and autonomic adaptation and all these problems, this is the pre-symptom uh, signs of congestion. And we should know that patients, when they start to develop symptoms, they are already coming in an advanced stage. It is very important to risk stratify. Knowing the risk stratification and which drug defines how we are going to screen them because it is really time consuming and, and costly. So it depends, it's, you see the higher their risk, the more vigorous we are in screening, the lower the risk, we are more lenient in that. So it depends on the different chemotherapy we use, it has different kinds of threshold. Um, now, uh, one word about radiotherapy, because radiotherapy is also uh, related, but unfortunately, it's really not very fully understood. Uh, we actually risk stratify them based on the uh, how much uh, dosage they get, and we look at their risk factors, and we try to risk factor, do risk modification and uh, treat them based on that. So in summary, uh, cardiovascular disease history is important before initiating cardiac cancer therapy. So this is a very important on the uh, burden of the oncologist to really dig into cardiovascular surgery, whether it is there before starting them. All cancer patients must have cardiovascular disease risk certification and categorize into low, moderate, high, and very high. 
Cardiothoracic, uh, cardi uh, cancer uh, therapy related cardiovascular toxicity includes myopathies, arrhythmias, vascular hypertension, myocarditis. It's not only myopathy. Patient must be instructed to report any cardiac manifestation. So if he in, in his course he has hypertension, he does not hide. He just has to. Maybe he doesn't know he need to tell it. He has to tell the patient that if you develop anything, he comes doctor. I developed an atrial fibrillation, so that he knows that this could be related. Cardio oncology teams are very important to decide and on prevention and therapeutic plans on the patient, and the management are including the pre-therapy group, the during therapy group and the cancer survival. Regular screening is the essential and, uh, depend and uh, depends on the risk level of the patient and agent used. Thank you very much. Dr. Cardon, that was an excellent presentation.